Hello, everybody. Welcome to PDHPE for term three. We're looking at um, doing PDHP as a work from home type thing this term. So we're going to be doing our lessons in a little bit of a different way. Now, to make sure that we have our book set up correctly, I want um, at the top of our page, it should say health. And beneath that, we're going to write being safe. I'm going to put that in the middle of my page, bold underline. I'm even going to make that a little bit bigger so it's clear that that's our heading. What size is that? That's oh, 36 is a bit too big. <laughs> so we're going to drop our size down to 28. Now, in looking at how I want this work done, I would absolutely love it if in your page, we'd write down our questions and then we'd write down our answers underneath. I'm going to try and be as clear as possible as to how this should be done. And I'm going to try to make sure that in every PDHP lesson, I give you guys some time to do some practical stuff at home. The practical and theory might be two different videos, but it's going to be pretty simple in getting everything done. Now, in your workbooks, I want everyone to write down the question. What does it mean? Sorry, oh, that's that made sense to me. What does it mean for a place? Let me just delete that whole question. That whole thing's confusing. If a place is safe, to you, what features make it safe? So here's where you could come with anything. You could come at me and say, I feel really safe in zoos because lions are there and lions are big and scary animals. So I know that there aren't going to be any dragons. You need to tell me what it is about different places that make it safe. So what it is about home that makes home safe. What it is about the classroom that makes the classroom safe. Think about some of the different places that you could be and what makes them safe. I want you guys to pause the video, give yourself some space to write in and answer this question. So hopefully you pause the video and you've come back. If a place is safe, what does it mean for it to be safe? So the easiest way to answer that is that there would be no danger. That the, the people we care about are watching out for us. If that's at home, that might be your family, your parents, your carers, your cousins, your sisters, your uncles, whoever. Someone is watching out for you. If that's at school, it will be your teachers. Um, what other things make a place safe to you might change to you. Some people might find that their safe place is very quiet. Some people's safe place might be very loud. Some people's um, safe place might be very dark. Some people's might be very bright. A lot of this is a, a personal thing for you. So what is it about your home that makes it a safe space? Now, this question is going to be entirely personal for each and every one of you. It's your home. So it's what about it makes you feel safe there. Now, in the classroom, here's where I might have a bit of a better understanding, but what makes a classroom feel safe? It might be that you have your own space. You trust that the people in the room will not hurt you. You trust that the teachers will protect you. You trust that the teachers will teach you. In this one again, it could be all of your own answers. Your answers might be different to everyone else's, but again, 
So what makes you feel safe there? Once you've answered that, so pause the video if you haven't finished that up yet. And we're going to move on further down the page. Should have separated these earlier. So we're going to do a bit of a brainstorm. What are some places that you feel unsafe? So in a list going down our page. One. A. Two. B. So all the different places that you would feel unsafe. So I don't know. I'm just like, I felt unsafe at a circus, maybe. I felt unsafe at, oh, I can't even think of something. A Call of Duty um, game lobby. Anything. Whatever places make you feel unsafe. We're going to be checking these when we get back to school. So I want you to list at least four or five places. I'm, I just wanted to, the letters don't matter here. I was just trying to get five places. Don't just make up random things because you're going to need to tell me next to that why you felt unsafe. So let's try and do one together. So if we're doing this one together, you would then have to do six. So I'm trying to think. It's very hard for me to feel unsafe. All right. One time I felt unsafe in the city. What was it that made, why did I feel unsafe there? I did not know where I was, where I was going, or how to get home. In this, it's in this scenario, I might have gotten lost and I didn't know where I was or how to get back to or from a different place. So, this is um, one answer. And you guys need to come up with five of your own. I didn't mean to do that. Five of your own. Pause the video. Get this done. Ready, set, go. So once you've got your five places where you felt unsafe and why you felt unsafe there, this should have taken you a, a, a fair bit of time to get through. I want you to, I'm going to move up. For each of these places, I want you to tell me how you felt. What was it that you felt in that situation? So how did I feel here? I felt stressed. I felt really stressed. I didn't know where I was going. Some people might have felt lonely. Some people might have felt anxious, sad, happy, scared. However you felt, it's up to you. They're your feelings. So going through these, writing down how you felt in those situations. Pause the video. Get it done. Okay. Now this next one we had a look at. I want you to, in your workbooks, answer these questions. What makes our classroom a safe space for you? We kind of did that above. This time I want you to go into more detail. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> what makes our classroom a safe place? What does it look like in a safe classroom? Here's where I'm going to give bonus points to those of you that like that draw out the classroom a little bit and highlight different features about it that, that make it feel safe for you. How do you feel when you are safe? And what are the different types of safe? So here's where I'm going to give you a bit of help. Oh, I can't undo this. <laughs> when we're talking about how we're feeling safe, we might feel physically safe because no one's trying to hurt us, hurt our us. Like whether like with violence, we might feel emotionally safe because the people that we're talking to are happy to hear about our feelings and we know that our feelings are going to be taken care of. We might feel mentally safe 
because I know that people aren't making me stressed all the time. And I know that I'm, I feel safe and comfortable in this situation. I can delete that part because it's not super necessary. All right. Now, once you, I want you to finish these questions, pause the video here and, um, and then come back once you finish this section. All right, so this is, I'm trying to line it up and it's not lining up properly. Boom. This is the last part of our lesson. What are some safety rules you know about writing? Um, what are some safety rules you know about riding bikes? Here's where I want to see how much details you can give me. All of the different safety features about riding bikes. One of them, I kind of gave it to you. All right, the full thing we need to wear helmets. I want you to give all of the safety features, all, all of the safety rules in as much detail as you can. Pretend you're telling someone that has no idea. Next, we're going to look at all of the different safety rules about crossing roads. What do we need to do when we cross roads? Once you finish that, the last part of our lesson, draw three safety images. So pictures, so pictures and words telling people about crossing the road safely, playing in a park safely and going to a shopping center. What are some things that we need to do to make sure that we're being safe in these places? In this section, there are no wrong answers. I want to see your best work. I want to see all of your creativity and I want to see this come through. We might have some PDHPE lessons where we go into um, our Google Meet and we like talk about some of the different things that we've looked at, some of the different things that we've done. When we are doing this work, remember, just like if we're in the classroom, I need to see your best effort. I need to see your best work. To finish off this lesson, I want everyone to do a little bit of practical, so I want you to, in your workbook, write down how many push-ups you did today. How many sit-ups you did today. How many star jumps you did today. And how many squats. Um, there we go. Sorry, I just like the, all of the different dashes to be the extended dash. <laughs> so this is our practical element for today's lesson. How many push-ups, sit-ups, star jumps, and squats? So my camera is a bit tight here. So push-ups is where we lay down flat on our stomach on the floor. We put our hands down and then we push up and then back down, up and back down. We're laying flat on the floor. Sit-ups, we're laying on our back and we're trying to push get our knees our knees are bent we're laying on our back and we're going to try and push our push uh sit our body up into a sitting position and all the way back down star jumps we're jumping up down up down up down and squats squats are a bit harder to show here i don't have a lot of room here we're going to have our feet shoulder width apart and we're going to go down oh i hit something there we're going to go down and then back up Oh. So that's the practical part of our lesson. I want to see your best work, your best creativity, your best heart. Let's go, guys. I know you can do it.